All right, guys, so this is a bit of an unplanned video. Uh, I still haven't gone to Rhode Atlanta. Um, and the reason why I'm making this video is because I have to bleed my supercharger system. So what happened was I was replacing these trim pieces, okay? Because uh, mine were pretty beat up and they were actually coming loose. And then while I was doing that, I realized that my supercharger system has quite a bit of air in the let me see if I can get, this is very hard to see. Okay, I think we can see that better now. All right, so that pink thing down there, that is my um, supercharger expansion tank. It's uh, basically a tank to, to hold um, the majority of the fluid in the system, okay? And that is not really supposed to have much air in it. Uh, it's only supposed to have two dime-sized bubbles at the very top of it. Uh, so I'm not really sure how I ended up with so much air in there, but I gotta get that air out of there. And really, I mean, when you look at it, this is kind of designed kind of janky uh, because, you know, this is the supercharger, you know, it's basically at the top of the, you know, top, 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 top of the motor. And then that, that canister is all the way down there. It's like down here. So, you know, it's just very difficult to, to bleed these things with that, with that canister all the way down there, you know? All right, so as you guys can see, this is the cooler bleeder, okay? This was made by a Corvette owner. Um, he actually started on the forum. Uh, I mean, he's still on the forum. That's actually how I contacted him on Corvette forum. Uh, but yeah, he basically came up with this on his own. A pretty smart guy, seems like. Uh, obviously, I already assembled my unit. Well, obviously not. I already assembled my unit, okay? This doesn't come completely assembled, but he sells you everything that you need. If you want, you could also buy the pump from him, but I didn't buy the pump from him. This is a standard, you know, just a vacuum pump. He he did recommend this pump. I mean, he told me, hey, you know, if you, I can sell you a pump that's probably overkill, but if you wanted something cheaper, you're gonna use it just, you know, kind of every now and then, then this pump from Amazon is fine. This was uh, 99 bucks delivered from Amazon. So anyway, so what does this contraption do? So this basically, this with the vacuum pump, it suck all the air out of the system with a method of vacuum and also running the the vehicle's supercharger pump so with these connectors here the system gets powered and with this guy here you tap into the fuse box where the fuse for the um the the, the supercharger uh pump okay the fluid pump is okay so you tap into that and then these electronics will basically cycle the system and with the solenoid from vacuum, okay, with, from the pump, you're gonna put it to here, um, and it'll cycle from vacuum to more vacuum and the pump running or something like that, okay? He has some really, really informative videos as to how to put all this together and how to uh, how the whole system works. He goes through the whole setup on, on, a, on, a, on a C7. So, you know, if you want a much more detailed uh, you know, explanation as to how this all works, you know, go, go see his video. I'll, I'll put the link down below in the description. Okay. But for now, let's just see how just a random guy, regular guy has never used this before. Let's see how this goes. Now, a bit of a warning with these uh, vacuum pump guys, these do smoke. Okay. You got to take this little cover off. Um, and these do smoke a good amount. I already tested this and I already kind of calibrated my system again. He has videos as to how to do all this stuff, how to set all this up. But, you know, and this smokes quite a bit. So I'm gonna have to open a door or window and put a fan out. But just FYI, you know, he does mention that as well in his video, but it, I didn't expect it. Cause on his video, he has, I guess he has a much nicer pump on his video and there's nowhere near as much smoke. So I guess because this is a cheap Chinese, you know, knockoff pump, it smokes quite a bit more, but anyways, that is normal with these vacuum pumps, so don't get freaked out. And before we get started, basically uh, a, a quick kind of overview of this. So uh, this this pot, basically you you put some uh, some a choice fluid in here, if you, whatever you're gonna use, if you're gonna use coolant, if you're gonna use distilled water or whatever, okay? But you don't wanna fill this all the way, okay? You just wanna have it maybe an inch or two above this line, okay? Because as this thing sucks, well, as that thing sucks, and, this container may get, may uh, suck more fluid in, okay? 
and he sells you everything that you need so like this adapter okay i got from him this adapter is a bolt-on adapter for the oem uh, piece okay and then he has like all these uh, quick disconnect fittings and all this stuff and he has fittings for like the, the all the supercharger setups from gm so basically like the camaros the ctsvs um the zr1s and all that kind of stuff so i think that i'm gonna offer the service of bleeding this to my local friends okay uh if you come to me uh we can probably get it done here in less than an hour i hope uh or if i you know and i can do it for you know a, a pretty reasonable uh fee or if somebody needs me to come to them in my local vicinity again i'm not gonna go you know too far <laughs> But, you know, then I can charge you more. But at least that way, you know, if I do, you know, uh, more than a few of these, maybe I can, you know, make my money back on this. And really, the main reason why I wanted to get this is not only because I need to get it done before I go to the track, but also since I have air, again, I'm kind of thinking that there's something, something's up here. I may have to replace a supercharger. I mean, not the supercharger, but the, the heat exchanger for the supercharger or something. And if that's the case, Again, bleeding this, you know, it's just a nightmare. And I don't like to rely on people, guys. You know, I like to do all my own stuff. And that way, at least now I have the setup. I have the right way to do it. Hopefully, this will work out. So anyways, let me get all this hooked up and let's see how this thing works out. All right, so I got everything set up. I'm going to be running two fans. This fan is going to blow a lot this way. And then this fan is going to grab the rest and grab that smoke out the window. I got everything connected. So this is the wire for the fuse that runs the intercooler pump, power and ground. Okay, and then I got my fluid in there. All right, so at this point, let's see, let's see what happens. Let me turn my fans on. I'm just gonna kind of stumble through this, guys. It's gonna get a little louder here because of the fans and the pump. Okay. Okay, so the pump is coming on and he recommends about seven inches or whatever that is. All right, so now we're gonna turn our system on. I'm just gonna do this automatically from here on out unless I need to add fluid. That's the only thing, we'll have to keep an eye on the fluid. But we should start seeing some bubbles coming up here soon. Yeah. Oh, there we go. So now it's going to extreme. So this is cycling the pump, the intercooler pump on and off with the solenoid. I'm not seeing any air bubbles. Okay, so I'm not seeing a lot of air coming out, but I am seeing the fluid move up and down on my canister down there. I can see it reducing with the with the vacuum, but I'm not seeing the air coming out. So he does say that it can take up to 15 minutes to evacuate the whole system. So I'm gonna let it run for a while. Hopefully I can catch, oh, there you go. Oh, you see, you see all that? That was a ton of air. Oh, I'm glad I caught it. Okay, so now I gotta keep an eye on this, making sure that, that I'm not gonna run low, but that got a huge chunk of fluid out. Oh yeah, there's a lot of movement down there now. Okay, so. This is just an extremely difficult system to bleed. So even with putting, this goes all the way to uh, 25 inches of vacuum, okay? And running the pump, it's still having a hard time bleeding this system. So that just goes to show, man, how poorly designed this is. So there's still some air pockets down there. So as the, as the vacuum goes extreme, you see that the canister goes really low. Oh, there it goes, bunch of air. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so now we're getting a bunch of air. All right, so at this point, we're just letting this thing do its thing uh, for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. He, just, he says it doesn't really harm anything um, to let it run for a while. Other than, you know, you gotta make sure that your battery's in good condition, you know, you don't want your battery to die doing this. Because this is running, this is running, you know, this solenoid and it's running the intercooler pump. So not a ton, but hey, make sure that you, you got good battery. 
All right, guys, so we're like seven minutes into this and I'm still seeing big air pockets coming out. And those air pockets down there are just getting smaller and smaller every time the pump cycles. And there's, there's even a little bit of micro bubbles in here, okay? And those continuously come out. So when this thing goes from into the into the yellow light, it goes into extreme pressure and it shuts off the intercooler pump. So then it like really sucks the fluid out of the system. I wish this thing would focus, but you can kind of see it there, just dropping that fluid level. Okay, and then watch what happens when it cycles. So just hang tight here for a sec, for well more than a sec. But as soon as the system cycles to running less vacuum and the intercooler pump at the same time, you'll see that the fluid rushes back into this canister. And goes finally focused. Okay, so any second now. See how much it sucks it. And I'm looking at the hose and there's still bubbles coming up. There it goes. Now we're gonna see, oh, you see? And now the fluid rushes back in there. And every time it does that, it just eats away at that air pocket. Man, that thing is just so hard to get out. Okay, so now here we go into vacuum again, and it slowly sucks it back out. So every time that it does this, that air pocket gets smaller and smaller. But it is at this point a slow process. I think that if you if you had this canister out and you maybe shook it or you called, held it in a different position, it would be faster. So we're just gonna let it continue to do its thing. Let's wait for another cycle because I think that's just so cool how it does that. And this is why jacking up the car, guys, and running the pump, just running the pump with the car jacked up, yeah, it does something, but it still doesn't solve the issue that this canister is, I mean, almost call it two feet below the top of the system, which is really the inner, the uh, supercharger lid. Ooh, bunch of air coming out. Bunch of air coming out. Oh, there it goes. Now let's see what it does to these air pockets. Okay, we're getting there. We're almost there. We went from having a, a solid inch of air to now just having those two pockets there. All right, so we're gonna continue to let it do its thing for a while. Okay, so now his instructions tell you to shut this valve and allow the system to run at maximum vacuum for a few cycles. So that's what we're doing now. So we're reaching basically the end of the system. You can see there's a bunch of air coming up. Okay, so now we're gonna Shut this valve off and turn off our vacuum pump. And we're gonna allow, ooh, a lot of air just came up. We're gonna allow that pump to come back on. Okay, so I'm supposed to open this. When this clicks into blue, it should, it should, the vacuum should drop and the system should suck a bunch of this fluid back in there and fill that canister down there. So let's see what happens. There it goes. There it goes. So, there's a tiny, there's still a little bit of an air pocket there. So, he has you close this valve, run the system in max vacuum, okay? And then, uh, once, once, you, once you reach to the point where you're not gonna run it anymore, so then what you do is, when it switches back to yellow, you close this valve. Okay, this shuts off the, uh, the vacuum system, but because the solenoid is closed, it's gonna keep max vacuum. Okay, so you close this valve and you turn off your pump. And then you come here and you open this valve and then you wait. When you open this valve, the solenoid is still closed, so it's still holding max, max vacuum. Then once the system switches to blue, blue means that the intercooler pump comes on and then the system sucks all that fluid. And guys, check it out. There is almost no air down there. Uh, I mean, there's a little tiny, like two little bubbles there, okay? 
And again, that's kind of what we want to see, two little bubbles there. All right, so I've got everything uh, disconnected. So he actually shows it in his video how to empty this pot, but you can use this, this fitting um, to, to empty this pot much easier. Just keep in mind that, so this is a dry fit uh, fitting. So meaning that when nothing's connected to this, nothing will come out. So that can be full and you can have it dangling like this and nothing will come out. But as soon as you connect it to this, then it opens a valve in here and then all the fluid comes out. So I use this to empty this into these two canisters, right? Because I, you end up putting more fluid than what you need in here. I mean, the end result is absolutely incredible. There is very little air down there. I think I got basically the two quarters that the uh, factory uh, is talking about. And I know that people have even used the factory tools and they can't get this result. So, you know, it sucked that I had to, uh, you know, that I, this, this setup is not cheap, okay? And then you have to go there and buy a vacuum pump for a hundred bucks. Yeah, he sells you the, the fittings and all this stuff separate. But, hey, you know what? Now I have a way to service this system that I did not have before. I don't have to rely on anybody. I don't have to go and, you know, try to meet with somebody or pay some shop. And, you know, and sometimes all that stuff doesn't work. You know, we try to do everything DIY here because, you know, I take my time and I try to do it right. And I want everything to be, you know, as good as possible. And unfortunately in today's world, you know, that ends up being that if you don't do it, a lot of times it just doesn't get done right, guys. You know what I mean? Um, and anyway, so, and then now, even though this is not like a small kind of setup, I'm probably going to bring this to the track. I'm going to bring this to Rotolina with me, this and the pump and everything like that, because I, I, I still don't know how the air pocket became that big. Okay. I don't remember it being that big. So it could be that I have some kind of micro leak. I don't have any actual leaks that I know about. Like I've never seen like a puddle or anything like that. But anyways, guys, so yeah, there you have it. Cooler bleeder, uh, very nice setup. And again, I'm not sponsored by, by this guy or anything like that, the guy who makes the cooler bleeder. So, you know, I, I didn't gain anything from him or he didn't give me for any, any kind of pricing. I didn't even tell him that, you know, I was going to make a video about it. But, you know, I figured that, you know, somebody would benefit from seeing it other than from his website. The guy doesn't do a lot of uh, advertising or anything like that but it does work you know really really well i'm very very impressed so yeah so now i am definitely all set for rotolana all right so i'll catch you guys on the next video peace out guys